So here we are at the upper food forest area. You'll also have to forgive me, I don't know where my kids put my stabilizer, so it's gonna be a little shaky, but I figured I might as well get an update out. The peaches are still dormant, but they're just starting to break bud. Very exciting. We have daffodils coming up everywhere. Garlic all around the fruit trees coming up. Comfrey starting to poke its head through. Those comfrey get huge. Elderberries still asleep. Currants are waking up. Tiny little service berry. There's an elder that's waking up. Here's a larger service berry. This thing's about to put on a show, man. When these things go, they look incredible. Other side here, I've got some uh, ingenious uh, set up here to try to get some of these branches more vertical so that they don't outcompete the central leader branch. This is a pear. Got some uh, daffodils coming up everywhere, daylilies, currants, service berries, sea buckthorn, the rhubarb's coming up, daffodils behind it. This is kale, more comfrey, strawberries in there. This is the border of kale for the bunnies. I get bunnies coming in here and daffodils are there. We got some sweet Sicily that I'm planning on trying to get to spread everywhere. We've got Lovage and Yarrow and Valerian in here. Garlic, onions. Here's the swale filled up with leaves still. I'm gonna Dig that out, and put it on the back side. Get some airflow back in there. That was mostly just for uh, thermal insulation in the winter time. And why not? I needed somewhere to put it all. These are has caps here. This is one of the first berries that we'll get. Nice cold hardy has caps. I got some nursery uh, Siberian pea shrub growing in there next to it. Once those get established, I'll spread them out. I'm still layering the has cap so that it'll root into the, uh, the mounded up soil and then I can turn that one plant into like 80. Here's another peach, just starting to wake up. Raspberry patch with some apples, sea berry, daylilies, garlic, onions. We got goji berries, onions, sea buckthorn, daffodils, currants, has caps, strawberries, all in this bed. A couple apples, rows of garlic, sea berry, service berry, autumn olive is nitrogen fixers, gumi is nitrogen fixers, sea buckthorn. This is a persimmon surrounded by daffodils. It looks like it survived the winter. Hooray me. I'm actually thinking of maybe moving that to the next uh, video that I'll show you afterwards. Moving it down into a new project, a wetter project. Rows of garlic. This trellis here is uh, grape and kiwi. Hopefully uh, you know, they say first year it sleeps, second year it creeps, third year it leaps. So hopefully the Kiwis are going to go bonkers on that. They had a really good season last time and uh, I think they're really going to come. We got clover planted everywhere as a ground cover, strawberries everywhere as a ground cover. And then we do onions and garlic and then we do red Russian kale for the bunnies. That way, the bunnies and clover everywhere. So the bunnies have clover, red Russian kale that they like, and then they hit this giant smell wall, and they leave all the trees alone. 
So it worked really well last year. We're gonna keep doing that. We got some blueberries here that are in the wrong spot. So I'm probably gonna move those. They're waking up, so I gotta do that soon. Shag bark hickory, another apple. We got hazelnuts in there. Here's a giant linden tree as a pollinator attractor right at the entrance to the food forest. So the idea with this guy is on the periphery of my system, I have pollinator attractors. And that way the pollinators come in, they find their little favorite tree, and then they see, holy smokes, look at all this stuff in the back. And they just go crazy. This is a giant sacrificial bed for the bunnies. Um, behind me, sorry to spin the camera too much, I'll try to go slow. Behind me we have the road edge and we have bunnies growing all in this wild stuff. This is like, I guess my zone 5, just because I haven't touched it yet, maybe zone 4. So this is where the bunnies all come in from. So the pressure point entry is here. So I give them giant beds of perennial red Russian kale that I don't mind if they eat. And then I try to wall them off with uh, black uh, blackberries and you know the garlic onion setup. So this whole setup, uh, the linden surrounded by garlic, onions, service berry. We got two more blueberry bushes down here. More garlic. We got blackberries, which I'm tip layering. You can probably see everywhere I'm tip layering these. This is kind of a nice spot for it because I actively manage all this stuff behind it in my zone one and it can't really spread anywhere too bad. You know, I said that's zone five, but it won't get there because I have my walking path. So it's kind of contained. So that's what you want to do when you're designing in creeping, crawling, leaping invasives. So the other thing I had going on, uh, this last couple days is this emerald ash borer is destroying all the ash trees and my government is actually spending tax dollars wisely for once. Look at this maple waking up. Isn't that beautiful? That is really neat. I never knew that they look like that. Super cool. So they're spending tax dollars wisely and uh, they promise to plant something like 10 trees for every ash tree that they destroyed to try to get rid of this ash borer and if you have the room to plant it then you can so they got oaks chestnut maples so i grabbed a whole bunch of uh, i don't think chestnuts will do very well here so i grabbed a whole bunch of oaks and maples i put an order of 500 in i did cut the order back a little bit but we planted tons of new trees here so all across here, roughly 10 foot centers, I got an oak or a maple somewhere. This is a nice flowering bush. I don't know what it is. Maybe I'll get your guys help on it when it has more, uh, you know, ability to get identified with flowers and stuff. Um, but it's a good pollinator attractor and surrounded by it. Surrounding it is daffodils and garlic and onions and comfrey. We got grapes to grow up here. Sea buckthorn making some nice guilds. We got a birch coppice here. So this I planted last year. I got daylilies coming up through it. So this is a birch coppice system that I'm going to start because it's under the power lines. So I can't let them get too high. So probably Roughly every four years after the seventh year, I'm gonna cut a quarter of them out and then I'll go on a rotation like that. And I'll just cut them, coppice means cutting them at a roughly ankle height. So I'll cut them at ankle height for firewood and birch coppice really well, which means they respond really well to a pruning like that. And then they'll turn into kind of this like thick bush where you pick, you know, it'll sprout a whole bunch. 10, 15 little new suckers. And you pick your kind of favorite three and you let it grow like that. We got another oak. This here is a tiny little oak, but man, this guy's gonna be the king of the system when he gets older. 
It's going to be a beautiful tree. It's on the north edge of the property, so it shouldn't shade anything out. It'll get shaded and protected by these maples. These are some asparagus beds. These are raised beds that I inherited from the previous owners, and they're in a terrible spot. They're hidden on the north edge of a wall of cedars. I'm really sorry for spinning the camera. I think I'm doing it a lot. And the house. So they get almost no sun at all. What's a day without a load of wood chips? When you can get them for free, up over my license plate free compost giveaway events at our municipality got to take care of anything that's free and available so we got probably two two trailer loads full which is probably like nine yards ten yards of compost and that beautiful for free my son's garden Still haven't dealt with the rocks yet, but he's got peaches, or sorry, pears, grapes at the bottom. I'm gonna get him planted out more to a polyculture, but I kind of want him to experiment and learn himself. So he's got raspberries. He's got a row of, oh my goodness. So he's got a row of garlic, and something I just noticed that I think is fantastic is last year we had a service berry that got taken right to the ground by rabbits and then I totally thought it was gonna die. I don't know if I can zoom in and it's waking up. So we just threw it in here for why not? It's on the north edge of this little garden. I thought throw it in here if it grows, it grows. It didn't think it would survive. That is cool. So that puppy lived. So when you plant this was this was just a row of wood chips, a big bed of wood chips. So as you can see what we did is we pulled the wood chips aside, put them in mounds, and then we planted the rows of garlic into them. And then as the garlic grows, so any time now, we'll just kind of recover them with wood chips. We'll push these mounds back over, recover them a little bit, just so that we can plant interspace in the inner space here. Got a rose bush here. So here we got some new beds I put in last year. I propagated strawberries out to here. Here's an autumn olive as a nitrogen fixer to service berries, birch, uh, more ornamental, lots of service berries in there, though there's probably five or six service berries. Daylilies at the bottom. We got all our non-edible flowers in here that we inherited. They're actually quite nice, so we keep them. It's a bed of Jerusalem walking onions. These things are incredible. Inner space with some Bermuda grass. This stuff always creeps in. I gotta do better with a a weed block. So I'm going to dig in a trench, bury a weed block, because that's how it climbs in rhizomial underneath. So all throughout here, this was an old vine. I don't know what it is. It's still alive. It just hasn't woken up yet. Possibly wisteria. I'm not sure. Creeping uh, Virginia creeper. I'm not. I'm not sure. But my goal is to transition this into a grape trellis. So we have grapes planted at all the corners. And then as the grapes get stronger, I am going to cut this off and leave the roots in the ground and this vine can feed the grapes and it'll sucker like crazy and I'll just use the suckering as, as molts chop and drop for it. I've been propagating daylilies everywhere. You can see I have tons of them. So for the health of the plant, I got to propagate it because it's been sitting clump for 30 years. More grapes everywhere. Grass creeping in, but man, I got so much to do. I gotta get some thicker mulch, lift these logs up. Gotta lift these logs up and get some uh, cardboard down just to keep that grass from creeping in. Then the raised bed on contour here. I pruned some peaches and 
stuck a whole bunch of them in. I don't know if they'll take. I'm not really good at this yet, so we'll try it out. They look dried out as anything, but it's been raining a ton, and that's just a big pile of horse manure on contour, pretty much. Manure and leaves all kind of mixed together, and then topped with just leaves. I got asparagus planted into here, Jerusalem artichokes, garlic, onions, and then I'm gonna use this as a propagation bed. So all my prunings, I'm gonna just pluck, 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 pop them in here. And then hopefully on contour, it'll store in whole water a little bit. Down here we have the first iteration of all these beds where I tucked it way down this hill, way too close. I didn't pay attention to sun aspect or anything. And you can see that this gets morning shade from this giant pine or spruce, whatever that is, and ash, which is the neighbor on the left of it. So it gets shaded in the morning, and then in the afternoon it gets shaded by a wall of cedars, and it really never gets any sun. It's a really low sunspot. So all that being said, the cherries, hazelnuts, raspberries, sea buckthorn, on this, on these contoured beds slash swale, have, have actually done surprisingly well. You know, I'm pretty happy with them. Got lots of catkins on the hazelnut. And I got a couple different genetics hazelnuts planted for pollination. I'll probably propagate out some more because they're wind pollinated, so they kind of need to be planted like corn, clumped up. And that's it. I'll do another video on a, my next project that I'm doing, but um, I haven't taken you down to the lower pawpaw area. I'll do that another time. This video's already quite long. I'll talk to you guys next time.